So how, do, how can I tell if this fan's working? Should I turn it on? Okay. So I'm gonna plug it in because this fan has a something wrong with it. You need a screwdriver to turn it on. So is it working? Yeah. Well, how can you tell? I can't, can you see the air? Can you see the air? No. no. So how do you know it's working, Lucas? You can feel it. You can feel the air, right? You can see the air? Can you see the air? I can't see, I can't see anything. Is the air, where is the air? Point to the air. Point the air, where's the air at? Okay, so the Spirit of God is kind of like a breath of air, a breath of air that God gives to the church to empower them to do all the stuff that we do. How about this, is this easier to see? So will you be able to see air here? Let me look. Woo, there you go. What do you think? That's a fire, right? So on Pentecost, the breath of God, the life of God, the Holy Spirit of God, the third person of the Trinity, came on the disciples. Yes. And it came like a raging windstorm. Have you ever been like in a big, bad storm that's really windy out and knocking trees down? That's what it came like. And then the Spirit of God was represented in the fire. Ooh, look, we lost a piece of it. And it landed on the heads of the disciples. I know. It was on the heads of the disciples. And they could speak all kinds of different languages, and they told the story of Jesus. Do you want some Holy Spirit on your head? Yay. Ooh, look at you. Want some? Wow. Want some? Whoa. That's pretty cool, isn't it? So the Holy Spirit came down on Pentecost, which is... Uh -oh. What's happening? I'm making a mess. Okay. Anyway, so the Holy Spirit came down on Pentecost. Do that came down on Pentecost, and and you could see the Holy Spirit at the birth of the church in flames of fire on the disciples' head, and through wind that was so strong, they could feel it. What is happening? <laughs> okay. I don't know. I got stuff caught in here. Anyway, so we celebrate Pentecost, and the word Pentecost is actually means 50. Do you know how to count to 10? Who knows how to count to 10? All right, let's do it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Do you know how to count in tens up to fifty? Ten, twenty, thirty, forty, fifty. So Pentecost, we celebrate fifty days after the resurrection. And that's today. It's the birthday of the church. And the Spirit of God lives in each person that believes in Jesus. So we have the power of the Spirit of God, because fire can do some damage, can it? Okay. <laughs> Fire can do some damage, can it? Yep. And wind can sometimes do damage. That's how much power God has. And the power of God is in us. So when we say we can't listen to our parents, I just can't do it anymore. They're so hard on me. You have the power inside you as a believer of Jesus to listen to mom and dad, right? To help clean up your toys. To help take out the garbage. To help scoop out the poop of the cat litter, right? You guys help with that stuff? You do? Good for you. So, in honor of Pentecost Sunday, I'm going to pray, and then I'm going to give you guys a, um, oops, a little snack, and then you're going to head downstairs, because i got some leaders already down there. So, Pentecost is the birthday of the church, so let's sing happy birthday to the church. Ready? Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday, dear church, happy birthday to you. Let's pray. Lord, thank you, Holy Spirit, for coming down on the birth of the church to give those disciples the power and the authority and the ability to share the good news. And may we continue to do that today in this church through your power, Holy Spirit. Amen. All right, so here you go. Take one of these and then head on down to Sunday school. They're goldfish. Everybody likes goldfish. Did you want to take one for Leo? Leo? He want to eat his own. Here, do you want one of this? Oh, good. Okay.
1 through 13, NIV, the Holy Spirit comes to Pentecost. So when the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. And suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. And they saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now, there were staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. And when they heard the sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment, because each one heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they asked, Aren't all these who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in our native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia, and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they ask one another, what does this mean? Some, however, were made fun of them and said, they've had too much wine. <laughs> this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. <laughs> too much wine. You don't know how to explain the Holy Spirit, you just say they must be drunk, right? So do you know what I mean when I say we're on the same page? You know what that means? Pretty much it's a group of people that are in agreement about achieving one thing or a couple of things. We agree. We're on the same page. A fancy way to say that is that we are of one accord. Okay? We're of one accord. So being of one accord means that everyone aligns towards a common purpose or a goal. So I want to read verse 1 again that Kathy read for us, but I want to read it in the King James Version. It says, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they, the disciples, 120 of them, were all with one accord in one place. So the King James says it a little bit different. Because you think, well, if they're going to be in a tight space, they're probably going to be of one accord. Oh, I have been to meetings where people are not of one accord. Amen? Amen. <laughs> You ever seen a toddler? They're in the same space as you, but they are not one accord with you, right? No, mom, I'm not going to do it, right? So they were in one place, but they were of one accord. And the phrase actually comes from two words, same mind. They were of the same mind. They were all thinking like-mindedly. That's what the disciples were doing right before the power came. Now, it doesn't refer to people who all think the same and feel the same about absolutely everything. That's not what it means to be of one accord. What it does mean is that people set aside their feelings and they commit themselves to the goal, to the purpose. So what was that goal or the purpose that the disciples had committed themselves to be as they were in one accord? Well, let's look at chapter 1, verse 13. And when they had entered, they went up into the, so they entered Jerusalem and they went up into the upper room where they were staying. Peter, James, John, Andrew, Philip, Thomas, Bartholomew, and Matthew. James, the son of Alphaeus, and Simon, the zealot, and Judas, the son of James. These all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication, asking God for stuff, right? With the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and his brothers. So what were they in one accord about? They were in the upper room in one accord, continually praying, asking God for help and discernment as they waited for power on high from the Spirit. Remember, Jesus said, go and wait. Go and wait to the upper room. My Father's going to send the helper, the advocate. But they were in one accord as they were doing it. They didn't agree with absolutely everything that each person said, but they were of one accord. And they were focused and making that base in order to receive the power of God. Hear me. If we want the power of God in this church, we have to be of one accord. And what is the purpose for the church? What is the command of the church? What did Jesus command us to do? Say it. Go and make disciples. 
That's the one accord. That is how we think the same. That is how we are one accord. In one mind and one heart with Jesus Christ and the mission that he has put us on. That comes first. Right? Okay. If you're not in agreement, hopefully you will be after this. So, today we celebrate Pentecost, the birth of the church. I explained it to the kids. We know that this is the day when the first believers of the way, following Jesus, Jesus is the way, the truth, the life, they received the Holy Spirit on Pentecost, 50 days after the resurrection. Jesus was no longer present in bodily form. He had ascended, but he said, hey, the helper's going to come. So stay put, be of one accord, think like-mindedly, and wait for the power to come. But did you know this? this was not the very first Pentecost? <gasps> Scandalous, you're such a heretic. <laughs> no, I'm not. Pentecost was actually a Jewish celebration called Shabbat. Anybody ever heard of Shabbat? Right? Shabbat, it actually in the Greek, it said means Pentecost. That's where they get the, that's where they get the name. Okay? So for hundreds of years before Jesus was on the earth, they were celebrating Shabbat, or the Greek word Pentecost. And it was to celebrate 50 days after Passover. Remember, Jesus and the disciples were celebrating Passover on the Friday before he died. Remember that? They were celebrating Passover. And then, 50 days after that, they would have been celebrating Shabbat in the upper room. Okay, so in the meantime, Jesus has seen everybody. He's risen from the dead and walked around, had lunch on the beach with him and all of that. Okay? It was when God, it marks the giving of God's word to Moses on Mount Sinai. So this is what Pentecost or Shabbat means. They still celebrate this today in Judaism. The word of God, they celebrate the power of the word of God that comes when Moses got the Ten Commandments. Remember that? And his face was all shiny and the power of God glowed so much on his face he had to put a veil on his face because the people were like, oh my gosh, I can't look at you. You're all shiny and gaudy like, right? <laughs> You've been with God. I know something's different. And so they're celebrating 50 days after the Passover, the giving of the word of God and the very first harvest, the very first harvest of the year, that first harvest. So what does that mean to us? Why is that important? Because God chooses to birth the Christian church in the middle of a Jewish celebration, all about God's provision of the word and all about God's provision of the power that comes with the word of God. Who is the word of God made flesh? <coughs> Jesus. Right? How do we understand what God wants us to do today? Through the power of the Holy Spirit. Okay? That comes with power, comes with fire. That's what was going on on Pentecost. So why is this important about this Jewish celebration? Because it, it's about provision, how God's going to provide. He provided the word of God on Mount Sinai, and he provided the first fruit, so the first harvest. He's going to provide a way for the church to be birthed through Pentecost and a way for all followers of Jesus to have the power and the strength to speak his word. So the other cool thing is there were thousands and thousands of God-fearing Jews. That's what it says in verse 5. Let's read it again. Now they were staying in Jerusalem at this time as they were celebrating, celebrating Shabbat. God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. So let me get this straight. There were thousands of God-fearing Jews speaking 15 different languages gathered in Jerusalem to thank God for his gift of the word, his gift of provision of the word of God, and his gift of provision of God supplying their life. Because food is life, is it not? So they're celebrating this. They're celebrating the word of God, which comes with power, right? You know, I prepare for the sermons, but what I say comes from the power of God. I'm just a conduit, and you guys hear what God wants you to hear. So don't blame me. I'm not after you. The Holy Spirit. Blame the Holy Spirit. So they're together. They're celebrating the provision of God, the word of God, the power of God, and the very life breath that God gives us in the form of food. Because without food back then, you starved. We just go to you know the grocery store. But that back then, if they had a bad harvest, they're in trouble. You know, they couldn't go to Costco, get a big bag of whatever, chips, right? So the Jews are all together, 15 different languages, every nation, every tongue. You heard what she said from the Arabs to the Cretans to all, all of Mesopotamia. They've all come to celebrate Shabbat, Pentecost. 
but they are still separated by their languages, okay? Because I don't know about you, but if you've ever been in a room when my brother-in-law starts speaking to his dad on the phone in um, Dutch, and or even in the same room, and they're talking to each other, and I'm like, I'm going to go do something. You know what I mean? Because you're not going to stick around. So here's these 15 different languages. They're all separated. They're all there for one thing, which is to celebrate Shabbat, but they're all still very separated by the different dialects that they speak. 15 different dialects. So they're all still very separate. But God's going to bring them together with one God language, the Holy Spirit language. They're going to be brought back together with the Holy Spirit language. That's what Pentecost is all about. One accord. They will be brought together in one accord. So, let's take a look at how the Holy Spirit brought all the people together in this one accord way, breaking down language barriers, and for us today, theological differences, um, personal agendas, pet scriptures, all of those things. Because the Holy Spirit will break that down if we listen. And we remind us of what we're here for. One accord, which is to spread the gospel. Okay? So the first way the Holy Spirit brings the church together in one accord is suddenly and with power from heaven. Power from heaven. Verse 2. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. Sounds like what hurricane and, and tornado survivors say when they're interviewed on CNN. Boy, I was sitting there and my whole house just went flying. Right? Or, oh my gosh, it sounded like, quote, a freight train. <coughs> Kathy called me and said, it sounded like a freight train went through the house. Okay? This is what happened at Pentecost. This is what happened in that upper room. And so all of those different um, God-fearing Jews said, what the heck's going on? It was like a huge sound. They couldn't miss it. It was coming from the upper room. And they got tongues of fire on them. Did it ever say in the scriptures that once they went out and spread the good news about Jesus in the 15 different languages, did it say that the tongues of fire left them? I can't find it. Somebody research that. John, get on that. And let's see. So, poor John. Poor John. Okay, Rob, get on that. So, somebody get on that. One of you guys. And uh, so the tongues of fire might have already still been there. It, it said the Holy Spirit got, came in the form of tongues of fire because we remember fire represents God in the Old Testament, right? Right? right, right. The Israelites followed God by fire at night, right? They couldn't see, so they, he led the way. Elijah, what happened? He asked God to call down fire to prove that God is the one true God, not these false prophets. What did Moses, what did God speak to Moses through? Fire in a burning bush. So the Holy Spirit came on Jesus when he was baptized in the form of a dove. We like to make the Holy Spirit a nice little kind third person of the triune God. And just, you know, whatever, you're telling me to shut up, but I'm going to talk anyway because I want to. <laughs> it's almost like we tell the Holy Spirit what to do. Don't we? Yeah. But he comes with fire. Fire! He comes like a freight train. Have you ever tried to overtalk a freight train with a conversation? Diane, weren't we just in, me, you, and Dan, we're over at the rock and we're talking, and here comes the train. And I try to talk louder. They know to be quiet because what's the point? Because there's a train coming. And I've tried to overtalk the train. You cannot overtalk a train. It's loud. And then they blow that horn. And then it's a... But we try to overtalk the Holy Spirit all the time. The Holy Spirit says, Colleen, don't say that. And I open my mouth and I do it anyway. You know why? Because I'm not afraid of the Holy Spirit. Well, I should be. Because every time I open my mouth and the Holy Spirit tells me not to, it's never a good thing. It's like squeezing the toothpaste and trying to stick it back in there. You know? Anybody out there with me? Any type A's? Raise your hands, type A's. No. Oh, look at they're brave. Yes, they are brave. And then sometimes we don't speak up when we should, especially at a time that needs to be spoken. You need to speak up, and we don't. And then the Holy Spirit's like, I told you to say this. Do you ever do that where someone's, you know, like I just saw a nice couple that was walking their, their little girl, and they said, good morning to you, good morning. Isn't it nice out? Yeah, why didn't I say, hey, I'm going to church. You want to come with me? Or did I say, oh, I'm the pastor of the church right up here, if you ever, no. Oh, good. Nice to see you. Off I go. What the heck's wrong with me? 
And I would, I would be what would be considered one of my gifts is evangelism. So you'd think that would come. So if I'm having a hard time with it, how would my introverts who don't have the gift of evangelism, even though we're all supposed to share the gospel, but some of us have had that gift to evangelize, meaning we'll talk about Jesus anywhere, right? But the Holy Spirit tells you to speak up, we don't listen. The Holy Spirit tells us to shut up, we don't listen. The Spirit comes from heaven, our scripture says. So why wouldn't we want to listen to the Holy Spirit? There's a lot of voices out there. I want to hear the truth. I want to hear wisdom from on high. So the Holy Spirit, I have not heard anyone hear the audible voice of God. I know people have. But most of us are going to hear the Holy Spirit by the prompting of the heart. And you know what I'm talking about. You leave your grocery cart out in the middle for somebody to hit, and you hear the Holy Spirit say, put that cart away. I don't want to. Fine, I'll just put it away. Because you know, Spirit's just going to bug you. Right? Or you said something you know you shouldn't have. And you think, I'm, you know, it was their fault. They made me say it. <laughs> they made me so mad I said that. No, you said it because you can't control yourself. <laughs> I'm just really speaking to myself. And so you say it, and you need, you know you need to go back and apologize, right? And it's okay. We're, we're a church family. We should be able to apologize to each other, right? Because this is where we're going to learn it, because then we take that out into the world and out to our families, right? If you can't apologize, you are not humble. That's crap. One of the first deadly sins. So if you have a hard time apologizing, now there's other people that apologize for absolutely everything and then they don't change at all. Now don't tell me the Holy Spirit's not working on you, but some of us need to knock upside the head. And some of us have been acting this way for 30 years and we expect as we become a Christian 10 years ago, I'm going to be great now. I worry, my dad worries, my grandma worried, I'm still a worrier. That's a sin. You know why? Because I don't trust God enough to handle it. I'll do it myself. Well, as I get older, it's harder to do it myself. My sisters and I were just talking about that yesterday. I said, what should we do after we retire? How about we go into the catering business? And my one sister's like, do you know how hard that is on your body? I've done it. You don't want to do it. And she goes, I'm just getting old. I don't want to do it. What I'm saying, what I'm saying is the spirit provides for us to say what we need to say or not say what we need to say. But sometimes we don't listen. And why wouldn't we? Because the words of the Spirit of God come with power and truth from heaven. That's the stuff I want to hear, right? That's the stuff I want to hear. Okay, we're moving on. The second way the Holy Spirit brings the church together in one accord is by empowering all believers. Am I on the second way? Yes, I'm on the second way. So, let's look at the verse again. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. So in their own, they're in the upper room and the 120 disciples are seeing this happen. And they stayed there. And then it empowered those timid disciples because remember, they're waiting, they're waiting for God to do something. They don't know what's going to happen. He just said, Jesus just said, I'm going to send the helper, I'm going to send the advocate. What does that mean? They don't know. They don't know what that means. And then boom, all of a sudden it happens and they're like, hey, I know what that means. Right, And so they go out, and as I said, they speak in 15 different languages to all these crowds that are separated by their language barriers. Okay, They're all there to celebrate Shabbat. Pentecost has just come on the birth of the church, the Christian church. And so these disciples have the flames on their head. Maybe they went out with the flames. I think that's pretty cool because if I go into a big crowd that's speaking a different language, you know, and all of a sudden I start speaking the language, their language, you know, it might be kind of cool in itself, but it'd be really cool if I had a flame on my head. But okay, let's say they didn't have a flame on their head. They're all Galileans. They speak one dialect, but they go out and they speak 15 different dialects. Isn't that amazing? The Spirit empowers them to do that. It's the great reversal of the Tower of Babel. You heard about the Tower of Babel in the Old Testament? Everybody says, oh yeah, the story of the Tower of Babel. That is a curse. God put a curse on the people. Because why? He disciplined them because why? What did they build? They built a tower and called it the Tower of Babel and they, and they worshipped the tower because they wanted to be as tall as God. They wanted to be able to reach up to God. But they forgot about God and they started worshipping the tower. And what did God do? I'm done with you. Boom. 
different languages, they couldn't understand each other, and pretty soon, after you've sat in a room with someone speaking a different language, you go find someone that speaks the same language as you, and you go away, and you, and you spread out throughout the land. But God had a plan, didn't he? So one day I'm going to bring you all back together in one accord. It's going to happen through my son. And when he comes back to his rightful place on the throne, you're going to get power from on high. You're going to get power to come back together in one accord and for one purpose only. I'll tell you what that is. The last way. The last way the Holy Spirit brings the church together in one accord is by offering life. By offering life. So they go out and they're talking and... Um, the Holy Spirit is like a powerful wind, and they're out talking the different in the languages of each tribe and nation and all of that. And these people are going to return home. And so the disciples go out, and they start speaking about the Tenth Commandment, right? That's what they spent their time talking about. <coughs> no. They spent time about the Ninth Commandment? Or did they spend time about how to honor Mother and father, yes, that, that's the commandment, but there's all kinds of different ways to honor mother and father, isn't there? And some way, if it's an abusive parent, is to leave. I, I'm just saying, you can look at the Ten Commandments, right? Even Jesus looked at the Ten Commandments and said, yeah, you shouldn't murder, but you shouldn't even be angry at someone. You going to argue with Jesus about that? Well, I don't think that's the right interpretation. You going to argue with the Spirit of God that says this is what you need to do? We like to argue with God. We like to look in the Bibles and be right. They did not go out and share the second commandment, the third commandment, the second amendment, the third amendment. They didn't go out and talk about politics. They didn't go out and talk about who's right and who's wrong. They went and talked about the gospel. Because the gospel is life-giving and it's the only thing that will change the lives of the people that are outside our door. Change your life, right? Change your life. Has the gospel changed your life? You don't live the way you used to live. Yeah, we're still a work in progress. But we don't live the way we used to live. We know how to look and see that something's wrong because we agree on absolute power from God and authority from God. And he gives us one job to do. Go out and share the gospel. Make disciples. Not disciples that agree with the way you interpret the scripture. Not the disciples that agree with the way you look and have a specific tradition in your church. Not the way you close the communion table or you open the communion table. Or you have no men, women in the pulpit or you do have women in the pulpit. That's not what they went and talked about. Their greatest and first and foremost, what reason to be in one accord was to go out and share the gospel message. That's our job, Kingsley United Methodist Church, is to go out in that community and not bad mouth the denomination. And I'm not saying they're doing everything right. There's a lot of things I don't agree with. Our job is to go out and share the gospel because that's what saves lives. That's what we're to do. We are of one accord with the gospel message. That has got to be our frontline purpose. That is the only way we're going to receive the power to do anything. Because that's what the disciples were doing before the power of the Holy Spirit came upon them. They weren't arguing about the ninth commandment or the tenth commandment or the second commandment. They weren't arguing about any of that. They were in prayer and asking God for help so they could figure out who to replace Judas with. And they were praying on what was going to happen next. And they were reminiscing about all the things Jesus said. And the Spirit of God comes down to them. And they're in one accord and they get that power. And they go out. Didn't say they argued in the upper room about what should we tell these people? <laughs> what should we talk about? They didn't need to. That's not even written because it's obvious what they talked about. They talked about the gospel. Because then when those people heard it in their languages, they're going to go home and they're going to reach them. Make disciples. 
in Jerusalem and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. How do you think that was going to happen? At Pentecost. So the Arabs went out and told the good news. And the Christians went out and told the good news. What else was on here? There was a lot of them, wasn't there, Kathy? Who, what else was on here? What, I can't even find it. Throw me out a name. I can't even find it. Oh, it's right here. And there were people in Asia and the Medes and the Parthians and the Elamites, everybody from Mesopotamia, um, Pamphylia, Egypt, Libya. I, it's like that's where everybody was at that time. That's pretty amazing. The Holy Spirit knows what he is doing, or she, if you want to argue, because it's non-gender specific in the Greek, and it's female in the Hebrew. No, it's non-generic gender in the Hebrew, and it's female in the Greek, so you could say she. But whatever. The Holy Spirit's a person. They know what they're doing. The Spirit of God knows what they've been they're doing because they know what Jesus wants and they know what God the Father wants. So they know what the church does. This is the only way, the church is the only way for people to hear the good news. That's our job. The only place. Salvation comes in and only through the church. And I'm not talking about this building. I'm talking about the mouths of the church. The people of the church. And when we're gathered, we're supposed to take what God gives us and through the power of the Spirit, go out and share it. That's what we're to do. That's what I'm going to concentrate on. Because that's what the Holy Spirit bugs me about all the time. And yes, we have to have plans on how to do that. And yes, we have to have leaders and all of that stuff. But if we remain in one accord about spreading the gospel, we'll be able to save lives. Amen? So I want to end with, I know we sang this last week, but I just want to end with Acapulco. We're going to sing it Acapulco, Acapella. Um, Bless the, be the tie that binds. What's the tie that binds us? The gospel message. The gospel. It is a heart language for the heart. So let's sing it. Bless be the tie that binds our hearts in Christian love. The Mindedly, the same mind of Christ. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for your word this morning. We thank you for Pentecost. What a great celebration. It's more than just red on the altar. It's more than just saying, oh, Holy Spirit, great. You know, you remind me of a dove, and you're so nice and meek and mild. No, the Holy Spirit never was. It never is. The Holy Spirit comes with power because the Holy Spirit is the authority of God. And so we house the authority and the power of God in us. Could you imagine if we truly, Lord, enabled the work of the Spirit in us fully? We wouldn't be able to contain it. And that was your goal, to go out and share the news. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right, so that's Pentecost. We're going to go back to next week, the reason for God. And we're going to still look at a couple of um, some statements that skeptics make against Christianity. One is that we're not of one accord. <laughs> we're hypocrites, that's one. So, but I'm not sure which one I'm going to be talking about. I don't know. I'll have to look at it. So in the meantime, uh, for you that are online, make sure that you write down the prayers that you would like to add to our Monday or to our um, prayer chain, and then Monday we'll send those out to our email, and then people will be praying for those people. So what do we have to pray about? we got Julie writing them down. we got any prayers? Way in the back. Laura? On the break, um, the 22nd of this month, will be one year with no stop, or anything. Oh, so wonderful. So one year. One year. That's wonderful. So yay. So we'll continue to keep you in prayers. Um, other prayer? Uh, Steve? My father-in-law, John, for health. John, for health. Thank you. Bob? My sister, Jenny, for her toe. Jenny, for health and healing on her toe. For Jordan, he was out doing door day. He got hit in the door. Luckily, he didn't go. He hard, but he got bang. Oh, he got in an accident doing DoorDash. Poor Jordan. It's yes, praying for him. Drunk in the door. <laughs> Linda? Uh, for Melissa's co-worker, June Joy for health. June Joy for health. Thank you. Adriana? Uh, the graduating class of 2024. The graduating class of 2024. Great concert, by the way. I saw you with your triangle. <laughs> <laughs> Kathy? Uh, prayer of joy. Our son-in-law, David, 
recent MRI showed everything is cool. Everything's good with David, so that's wonderful. So yeah. praise God. Yeah. Any pray for my husband, JB. Okay, JB, with some health issues. Okay, we will pray for him. Pray right, for him. Joyce for help, John. Uh, Michelle for her ongoing battle and uh, praise for Connor came through the surgery. Yeah, and I was wondering if he did or not. So Connor, um, Connor's a little five-year-old, yeah. six-year-old, and he's your uh, great nephew. Yeah. And he um, has brain cancer, and he's been through two surgeries. This is the third now. The fifth. Five surgeries, yeah. and um, he came through it great. So we're praying that that surgeon got all the cancer and that he will be cancer-free. So pray for. Um, Connor to be cancer free and then for Michelle as she goes through treatments for her cancer just pray she gets, keeps that strength up. Other prayers? Denise? My sister Deanna. Can sister Deanna pray? for cancer. Pray for her as she has her treatments. Pretty rough on her. Yeah, yeah Jack? Um, I've got several colleagues who are struggling with cancer. You work for a pharmaceutical company, can't they come up with a cure? <laughs> can, can you pass a note from us? Someday, let's hope. <laughs> Someday. Yeah. So yeah, for co-workers with cancer, yeah. this and is then, it's just uh, tough. So. For this church too right now. And for, and for the church. And for the church. For our church here. Yeah, the greater church. Okay. Dan? Gary for surgery. Gary for surgery. Jill? Um, an eight-year-old that's having fainting spells, just that they can oh. figure out what's going on with her. For an eight-year-old? Okay. For an eight-year-old who's having fainting spells and for their parents because that's going to be nerve-wracking. Diane? Uh, for several of our volunteers at The Rock that are experiencing health problems. Yep, got a lot of health problems at The Rock with some of the volunteers. We're going to pray for them. Bob? My grandson Jacob for personal. Jacob for personal. Do I see anything else? Ellie? Dale, he's not feeling well. He's got what? He's not feeling well. Dale's not feeling well. Okay. Because it didn't rain. That's what I was going to say. Um, for everybody with allergies, I'm looking at Sue, and everybody that's got the, the hacking and the coughing, um, we're not contagious, we just have allergies. So, um, prayers for everybody dealing with that. But thank goodness for the weather. Isn't it gorgeous? Thank you, Jesus. Um, all right. Anything else? Safe travels for Bob King and, and uh, NC as they come back from the UP. Having a good time up there. All right, let's pray. Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you for spring, and we know that May showers bring spring flowers or whatever that is. <laughs> I don't even know, Lord. You know it. And so, but it's like they're already popping up. So we give you thanks for that. Thank you for the beautiful weather. And Lord, we do pray for those that are not feeling well. They would love to be able to just go out and enjoy the weather, but some are very, very ill. And, um, they're just struggling to get through cancer treatments. There are many that are, I mean, it's a good thing that there's cancer treatments and it extends life, but it is hard on the heart, hard on the body. So we pray for those right now that are either going through their treatments and having some, you know, not great side effects to those that will be going through treatments. We ask that the side effects are mild. And Lord, above all, help it to cure their cancer. And Lord, we do pray for a cure for cancer. And hopefully sooner than better. We'll pray for sooner than later. And Lord, we pray for each person here that is empowered through the power of the Spirit. If you believe in Jesus, Lord, you have given us the gift of the Spirit of God. We have been baptized in the power of the Holy Spirit. And so we just pray that we will speak up, Spirit, when you prompt us to speak up. Shut up, Spirit, when we are told to shut up. Bite our tongue. Or deliver the message with a little bit more grace and love. And Lord, we pray for our church, of course. Thank you so much for this community church that serves the community of Kingsley and beyond. May we be here for many, many years to come. And thank you for teaching us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. All right, as the praise team comes up to get ready for the next song, I'm going to ask if someone will come and take the plates. And I believe we're still giving to Cross.
Crossroads Farms, and I believe that's who our grateful giving basket. If somebody wants to bring that up with them, or the kiddos in the back, if you want to bring it up. And please stand join us. The plates do.
left side of your pews. If you are a visitor or a guest, we call them call you guests because we love you. And please fill this out. You'll notice that it says, which service are you attending today, 9 or 11? You were at the 10 a.m. service? We <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, we didn't, want, we didn't want to reprint the cards, so we, want, <laughs> we wanted to use these. So if you could fill this out, take it home with you, or you can just go ahead and throw it up here at the offering plate. All right, so a couple things. Sit back and chill. Here we go. So downstairs, after all the cleaning yesterday, thank you for everyone who did that. Um, there's a garage sale downstairs. It's all free. Yeah. So there's stuff, uh, and there's also some chairs over here in the access center. So don't forget the, those on your way out. So get it, take it. And we're only going to do it for two Sundays. Whatever's next, left after this Sunday and next Sunday, it goes away. Yeah. So check so it out. Thank you for everyone who did that. And then um, the high school sports is in need of a couple of things. Um, this Tuesday, there's a big track meet, and they need someone, two people who can take work at the gate. It's early. It's 2.30 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. It's, he told me it's going to be kind of crazy. Well, I, sell it. I guess sell that. Anyway, so um, if you could help out, that would be great. So I'm here to talk about VBS. It is in only just a little over a month, so June 24th through the 28th. It's probably our biggest ministry that takes the entire church to be part of. Next Sunday, we promise to have a snack list, right? Kelly, she's not even here. She went downstairs. And Ayla. So we, um, this is where we need not only people here who are here to those times from 9 to noon to help out, but also to um, donate stuff. So we will have a list hopefully next week. Um, the snacks will be easy this year. Um, and then we just need people to come and be crew leaders and to help with some of the stations. So if you can help out, let me know. Um, the kids are already who are old enough to help are already stepping up. And this is a huge impact. I was in school a couple weeks ago in a math class. A kid came up to me, and I couldn't even remember who he was, but he came up to me and he said, you're the lady from BBS that I sing songs with. Yeah. So it's impactful. That's right. Okay? We're to make disciples. We can make them when they're five. Yep. <laughs> okay? And so we need, we, this, is, this is huge. <clears throat> All right? So where you can help, we would appreciate that. So is that it? Actually, there were two kids that I saw riding their bikes this morning, and I'm like, go to church. I didn't say it to them. I was thinking it to myself, and I'm like, or go to VBS. I'm going to make sure that that house gets a little thing for VBS because I want them to come. Because then they grow up, and they remember people that were there. That And guess what? The whole week of VBS, they hear the word of God. They hear that God loves them. Isn't that something you want to send kids out to, to college with? Isn't that something you want to send kids out into the world with? To know that no matter if they don't feel loved, God always loved them always loves them. So let's pray. Lord, thank you for the outreach of this church. Thank you that we are the light in the Kingsley community that continues to share the love of Christ and the message of the gospel. It's in his name we pray. Amen. All right, have a